that's what the ideas are. Then that might give you some ways of interpreting your book. What you have to do is read. So today I'm gonna to be attempting the one day book cover design challenge courtesy of Young Gun Season 2 from the Futures YouTube channel. They're an educational platform that teaches the business behind graphic design. All of their information is gonna be linked down below along with the original challenge video, so make sure you go and check that out. Starting the challenge off, I have to pick three classic fiction books that I want to redesign. And since the original video came about, it's given me time to kind of think about books that I've read in the past that really resonated with me. And so I'm going with The Road by Cormac McCarthy, Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck and Hatchet by Gary Polson. I've read these books from elementary school through high school and all of these books have kind of resonated with me throughout my life and they all kind of carry the same sort of tone at one point or the other and I think it's going to be super beneficial when I am redesigning them. So starting with the rules. I have to use the template that's provided in the description of the original video. I can only use four colors max. I can use illustrations, vectors, graphics, but I can't use any photography on the cover. I have to incorporate the publisher logo, the UPC code, and all sorts of things that make it look like a real book. And I should consider putting finishes on there, inks and stuff like that, just so that it kind of has that original feeling. The judging criteria this time around is the concept, the aha moment conveying the main theme of the books in the cover, the shelf presence, like drawing the customer in basically, and then the cohesiveness between the covers. So even though there are three different books from three different authors, we're trying to design the cover so that they all kind of look like they're from the same sort of series. So at the end of this video, I'm gonna be judging myself based on that judging criteria. If you have any feedback or critiques or wanna say anything to me at all, feel free to leave it down below because I read absolutely everything that you put down there. I haven't really read a lot of fiction books throughout my life. In fact, these are just some of the select few that I have read. I'm super excited to take on this challenge because the closest thing that I've done to a book cover design is the last packaging design that I made. And I'm just super excited to kind of learn about this and try to figure out a really nice way to kind of portray these covers and also make them cohesive. Before I start doing research, I just want to say that the mock-up that we're going to be using today is available with a link in the description from the Creative Market. It's an affiliate link from the future. So when you purchase that, you're also going to be supporting the future, which means you're also going to be supporting the creative community because that's what the future is there for. So let's jump into research. So in my research, I basically just kind of read the book summary for all three books. I'm gonna talk about them a little bit, so if you don't, if you've never read these books and you wanna read these books, I'm not gonna spoil anything that I, I don't think, um, but if you don't want any spoilers, definitely don't listen to this part. Um, basically, The Road is about a man and his son, and they don't have names throughout the whole book. It's kind of a post, it is a post-apocalyptic book. It takes place after something happened. They never actually tell you what exactly happened, but it takes place in a nuclear winter. Um, it's a super, super eerie book. It's not scary or anything, and it's just kind of like, it develops a really good relationship with the father and with the son. And it's kind of about how like they know that they might die and they know that the father probably is going to die, but they're kind of still developing a relationship. The father's trying to teach the son as much as he can before something crazy happens. So it's a really good book. Definitely go check it out if you haven't read it. But for the sake of design, um, there's a lot of directions you can go like the main theme of that and eerie. And taking us into the second book, we have Hatchet. Hatchet is about this kid named Brian and his parents are recently divorced or getting a divorce or something like that. And his mom basically cheated on his dad and he's flying from New York to Canada, Northern Canada, where his dad lives. And on the plane that he's flying in, it's like a small passenger plane, the pilot has a heart attack and dies and then the plane crashes. So that's not really a spoiler or anything that's actually on like the synopsis, like the back cover of the book. Um, but then the book is basically about Brian like trying to survive. He has a hatchet, which is why the book is called Hatchet. It's a really good book also, definitely go, go read it, but it's also a survival kind of eerie like book about death and, and survival and all, all kinds of stuff like that. So there's definitely some really good directions we can go there as well. And then last one is gonna be Of Mice and Men. It's about these two characters named George and Lenny. Lenny is a really big giant dude who is like mentally disabled. They never specifically say what he, what his disability is, but he is mentally disabled and he constantly kills things. Um, this book takes place during the Great Depression and George and Lenny are basically constantly trying to find work because Lenny always messes something up and they have to keep running from town to town. 
Um, and like the beginning of the book starts with basically Lenny having a dead mouse in his pocket because Lenny loves to pet soft things, but he always ends up killing them because he's way bigger than the things and then they end up dying because he like suffocates them or whatever the case may be. So that's also a really good book. It's a pretty short book. Definitely go read it if you haven't. But all of these books kind of have to do with this eerie, vibe and dealing with like pain and misery and i think that there's awesome conceptual directions we can go with those ideas um and then capturing that main theme getting that sort of aha moment and kind of wrapping them back together with a ton of cohesion and so on and so forth so i am going to jump in to sketching i'm going to lay down some ideas um i think i have a pretty solid direction of where i want to go with these um, I'm definitely going to try out a few things, but I'm pretty confident in where I want to go with them. So I ended up making six sketches. From left to right, we have Of Mice and Men, The Road, and Hatchet. I put the ones that I like the most on top and the ones that I like the least on the bottom. Starting with Of Mice and Men, I ended up going with a dead mouse because I think it's really gonna drive home the fact that Lenny kills things that are smaller than him. And then on the bottom one, I ended up going with a Luger pistol because at some point in the story, there is a Luger pistol involved. However, I think that the dead mouse is really gonna carry home the main theme because a the Luger pistol is a part of the story, but it's not necessarily necessarily the main theme of the story. So for the road, I ended up going with a dark background because I think the contrast is gonna be super important for shelf presence. If I was at Barnes & Noble or something, I don't know if three white books lined up would really stand out to me versus something with a little bit more contrast. And so that's why I went that direction. I ended up going with an arrow because at some point in the story, there's an arrow involved and somebody getting injured and so on and so forth. Um, and I think that it's gonna be kind of a cool color that's different because the problem with the other design that I made for or the other sketch that I made for it is that it's a road and the story is called The Road and I think that that has been very overdone before with this book and I think that it's just gonna it's just not gonna be that good so I ended up going with the arrow instead. For Hatchet I ended up going with a crashed airplane because I think it's a huge part of the beginning of the story and it sets the path for Brian's survival throughout the book and I also really like the visual and verbal contrast between the name Hatchet and there being a crashed plane on the cover because it's gonna kind of throw the viewer off and be like well why is there a plane on the cover if the book is called Hatchet because both of the original covers that are out for Hatchet have Hatchet's on them, surprise, surprise. I think that's great for the original books, but for a redesign, it's not original and I don't like it. And so I'm not gonna go with that the same way that I'm not gonna go with a road for the road. So I'm gonna jump on the computer and I'm gonna start designing these covers. For these designs, I had a very clear direction about where I wanted to go based off of the sketches that I already made. So for this one specifically of Mice and Men, I ended up going with the dead mouse that I talked about before. And the one thing I was trying to do was really play with the negative space and like the white outlines that are in the silhouette of the mouse. I ended up going with a white eye because it kind of points to like conceptually the denial that George and Lenny have in their relationship that they know that Lenny is going to keep messing things up just like he ends up doing throughout the story. And it kind of points to like death and like how it's kind of inevitable that something is going to happen one day people are going to die somebody's going to get hurt and history is going to repeat itself and so this is the final product and i am super happy with this cover i added like the half toning on and the texturing on the front to kind of represent the finishing touches in the judging criteria because i think it's going to be really good for like a physical hardcover copy the back is super simple it's a synopsis um a quote about it and then just a little bit about the author and then the seam and, and the side of the book and stuff like that i all kept it very simple for the road, I ended up using this awesome like arrowhead or arrow tip that I found online as a reference. And I was really trying to play with the 6B brush pencil to kind of highlight the depth in the arrow and make the cover look a little bit less 2D. The original cover literally is just text that says the road. And so I ended up adding this blood conceptually just because I think that it really highlights the fact that blood is shed in this book. And when you when you look at this, like you don't think about a son and a father trying to survive. You really don't, you don't think about an apocalypse or a nuclear winter or any of those things and so it still keeps the mysterious aspect of the book but it still kind of shows a little bit of the the reality and the violence that takes place in this book and so I really I really like that I ended up using Helvetica new on all of these covers and I know that I really could have played with some different typefaces and stuff like that but I really like the simplicity and also this is a one day challenge and I just kind of ran out of time and I got tired and, and my brain isn't thinking the same way that it would be thinking over a longer 
longer period of time. So this is what I came up with for the road. I'm actually really happy with this design, but there are a couple things that would have changed. Like I would have experimented around with some different typefaces and I definitely would have reorganized the back cover, not only on this book, but on all three of them because they're all pretty much exactly the same. I was just kind of crunched on time and it isn't somewhere where I wanted to invest a lot of time into. And then lastly, I would have extended the back of that arrow through the side of the book and then onto the back cover because I think it would have added an extra layer of depth to holding the book in your hands and flipping it around. And that's gonna go hand in hand with the actual texturing and like half toning that's on the front cover of this book. So for Hatchet, I ended up drawing a crash little passenger plane. Let me just say that conceptually, this is definitely my least favorite and this is my least favorite in general. Um, I think the illustration is good. Like I think it's cool. I think that the cover is gonna end up being cool in hand, but it's just not my favorite. So this is what I ended up coming up with. It's basically the same thing. The back is pretty much the same. Um, obviously the publisher logo is different, but it's simply just Hatchet, it's Helvetica, it's a crashed airplane. Um, the only thing that is different about this one is the side of the book. I actually like how I did this one a little bit different, um, but let's get into the judging. So these are the covers. If we go over the judging criteria one more time, we have the concept, conveying the main theme, shelf presence, and cohesiveness. I think the one thing I'm lacking the most amongst all of these is definitely the concept. I think it's kind of there for My Cement, it's kind of there for The Road, and it's not really there at all for Hatchet. I think if I had a little bit more time, I could definitely dive a little bit more in depth and I can come up with some cooler concepts for all of these, but it just wasn't there this time. I think I did a good job conveying the main theme on the road and Hatchet. Um, Hatchet's about a plane crashing and survival. And I think that that definitely says survival in a plane crashing. Um, on the road, I think that it definitely conveys the main theme because the main theme is super eerie. It's super dark. Like it's also about survival, but it's also about kind of the unknown. Like the guy and his son don't even have names throughout the whole book. And I think that cover definitely portrays that. Of Mice and Men, not so much. I think that the dead mouse or maybe not dead mouse um, does a little bit, but I don't think it's all the way there. Next we have shelf presence. And I think that all of these look awesome. I think that if they were at Barnes and Noble or something and they were right next to each other, I think that they definitely would all look really good next to each other. Um, I want to pick all of these up and like reach into the screen. And I really want to like feel that half tone on the front covers and, and see like, okay, is it printed on there or is it actually like texture? Um, but I really can only say that for the front covers because when you turn them around, they all look pretty much exactly the same. And if they were in a series, then that would maybe make sense if they were from the same author, but they're not. And so that kind of is a little bit too cohesive. And that takes me straight into the cohesion of them. Again, I think that they all look great next to each other. I think they are super cohesive in the front, but when you flip them over on the back, maybe they're a little bit too cohesive. And the shelf presence on the side of them in the back, I just, I really don't see it being there. I think I should have definitely gone a little bit more in depth and, and been a little bit more unique with the back of the books and with the side of the books. But like I said, the front of the books look awesome. So I started at 11 a.m. today. It is now seven o'clock p.m. It's been eight hours and this has been a super super difficult challenge because it's not like the last one i did where you're just designing one packaging design maybe two and then you end up picking one this one you actually had to design three book covers the backs of the covers the sides of the covers so the last challenge took me about six hours this one took me eight hours so you added another two hours on there with very very minimal breaks um, the last challenge, I took a couple decent sized breaks to eat lunch and stuff like that. This one, I just kind of powered through the day. Um, and it definitely, it was super difficult. It was super difficult kind of adapting my illustration technique and skill to fit something different and portray something else in a book. Um, if you've seen my art, a lot of my illustration that I do is like super cartoony and stuff like that. And it was really, really difficult to um, stretch creatively that direction of, of, of not being cartoony and, and doing something completely different. And so that's why I had to do it on the iPad because it's the only tool that I have where I can get super, super creative with it because there's no way that I could have been able to do all of that with my mouse unless I found like some vector art and, and, and something like that. So anyways, all in all, this challenge has been awesome. You have already seen me judging myself and you've already seen the finished product. So let me know what you think of those down below. I really want to see your critiques, your feedback, anything that you're thinking. I would love to know it and it's very greatly appreciated. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, the notification bell and drop a like because it helps me out as a content creator and it lets me know that you want to see more content like this. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and peace out.